morning specifically. So you are welcome here at Center for Spiritual Living Ocala. We are in an open, kind of uh, progressive explorers of consciousness here. Well, that's what I'll say. You're going to see that more and more this morning. <laughs> so what is our vision? Our vision here is that we are a model center for spiritual living as evidenced by the transformational impact we have not only on this spiritual community, but as we ripple out. You know, you all have spheres of influence, places you work, places you go to school, your friends, neighbors. As your life works better and people start to see that, you know, it touches, it just keeps touching folks and things just get better and better. And so our mission here is that we give people, we empower individuals to awaken to the power and presence that lies within and all around them so they may live their best lives. In other words, this thing some people call God, the universe, spirit, it goes by many, many names. It's right here, right now. You don't have to ask it to be here, it's here. And whether we recognize it or not, that's kind of where the rubber meets the road, right? That's what we're here to do, is to recognize and feel ourselves as part of that power and presence. So we are one of about 400 different centers that are located all around the world, and you just happen to walk into this beautiful little gem here. And so uh, we're grateful you chose to spend your Sunday morning with us. And what else we have here? Our values. This is what is important to us as a spiritual community. The first thing on the list, spiritual growth and practice. So I'm going to say them, and if they resonate for you, say them after me. So spiritual growth and practice. Excellent. Love. 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 Appreciation. Appreciation. Community. Community. Freedom. Freedom. Creativity. 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 Health and wholeness. wholeness. Generosity. Generosity. And financial well-being. Financial well-being. All right. (laughs) Somebody's excited about that. (laughs) Tune in. There's more to come. Yes. So um, I think that's all I'll do for right now. I'm going to right now invite Katrina Lilly to come up and do a song for us. We're so blessed she's in town this weekend, and it just so happened to be on this very special Sunday where Galen Griggis is, is sharing from her book, Psychedelic Streams and Rituals. And so we're very excited for this morning. And uh, take it away, Katrina. Thanks. I'm so happy to be here with all of you. See if that on. Let's see what song I'm going to sing. All right. I invite y'all to hum along or sing along if you feel the call. It's kind of our warm up to help move your body. I like my eyes. I like my smile, I like my energy, I like my style, I feel good in my body. I am embodied, I feel good in my body. Oh, I am embodied, and I like your eyes. I like your smile, I like your energy, I like your style, you feel good in your body, you are embodied, we are embodied, angels embodied. Yeah, we are embodied, 
were angels in body. Maybe I'm the feet. Either way, I know I have what I need. I am embodied. I'm an angel in a body. Ooh, 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 ooh. I may not always feel. But I will remember I'm an angel in a body And I love this body Though I'm not this body I love my body I am Yeah, I want to, uh, there we go. Now, I, mean, I want us to own that for ourselves, that we are our own medicine. So maybe if you, and you see how naturally my hands just kind of went to my heart to, to like honor that center of our medicine. So uh, just for a second, maybe if you feel comfortable, you don't have to, and you don't have to do anything I'm requesting of you. This is you, you do you, and we'll just kind of flow with it and see what feels right for you. But I invite you to put your hands on your heart and just say, we are our medicine. We are our medicine. Yes. And today I want to honor and dedicate not only this book, because the book and the dedication in the back of the book, and I'm going to share it with you, is dedicated to Maria Sabina. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about Maria Sabina. And she always lit these candles. She had these candles on her altar at all times, and they were always burning. So in honor of Maria Sabina, I light these candles as an opening ritual. Oh my gosh, I'm feeling like the energy of her presence and just the, uh, yeah, her heart. And I want to share with you the dedication because it tells a story. It tells why we're here and why we're doing what we're doing. Dedication to Maria Sabina, and this comes from the, right in the back of the book. Teacher of Sacred Mushroom Medicine. We would not really have known Maria Sabina Magdalena Garcia. Great name, right? I love that name. Maria Sabina Magdalena Garcia, who was a Mazatec Corindero shaman and poet. And she lived in the Sierra Mazatec area of Oaxaca in southern Mexico. There was a, in 1955, a banker and amateur mycologist named R. Gordon Watson and his wife Valentina Pavlona Gurkin Watson had visited her. Tina, that she went by, Valentina went by Tina, was a pediatrician and although often not credited, Tina worked alongside her husband until her death in 1958. Tina was responsible for introducing her husband 
to mushrooms. Beginning in 1953, Tina led expeditions, Tina led these expeditions with her husband to research the religious use of mushrooms by native peoples. It was in Mexico where the couple were first, the first Westerners to witness a psilocybin mushroom ceremony. It was during a later visit they participated in the ceremony led by Maria Sabina. The Wassons gathered spores from the psilocybin Mexicana that was used in the ceremony. They gathered these spores. And they had taken them to Europe where they were cultivated. These mushrooms ended up being examined by Albert Hoffman. Who knows who Albert Hoffman is? Not Ram Das. Yes. Yeah. He first synthesized LSD. He was the first person to synthesize what we now know as LSD. So they took the mushroom spores to Albert Hoffman, resulting in the discovery and the isolation of psilocybin. Fascinating, right? The Wassons sampled the mushroom ceremony after convincing Maria Sabina they needed her help finding their son, which was unfortunately a false pretense. Maria introduced the Wassons to her mushroom ceremony. Two years later, R. Gordon Wasson published an article in 1957 in Life magazine and revealed his mushroom journey. The outcome was not good for Maria Sabina. As hundreds traveled to her small village in Oaxaca from around the world to sample her sacred journey on the mushrooms, including Bob Dylan and John Lennon, just to name a few. The sacred ritual was exposed and Maria Sabina suffered for her innocent revelation. At one point, she was put into jail and her house was burned by the people in her village who were angry at all the people coming and looking for Sabina and her mushrooms. Eventually, her honor was restored. After many years, Sabina is now revered and celebrated for her healing mushroom wisdom. In Oaxaca, her picture is on the side of the taxi cab. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, she is famous in every sense of the word. But originally, and this is some of what I'm sharing this for you for a reason. Listen to her life now. I'll just conclude. Maria Sabina's life spanned from 1894 to 1985 when she passed at the age of 91 years old. Maria lived 91 years. If you saw how humbly she lived in a little hut with, you know, just plain, really kind of dirt floors and lived close to the land and lived close to her mushrooms. But I believe the mushrooms had a regenerative effect on her as well. And that is why she lived to that ripe old age of 91 years old. Maria Sabina's life, this one tiny woman with her small brown mushrooms, psilocybin Mexicana, had an enormous impact on the world of brain science. Her invitation into her small sacred mushroom ceremonies lifts our minds today to the potential of healing our mind body and soul sickness and change in our world. Maria Sabina was a poet and she used many I am statements to beautifully in her, in her healing chants during the healing mushroom ceremonies. I had my first exposure to her poems and chants during my MDM training with MAPS in 2021. I had an assignment to watch her on YouTube. She's available. Maria Sabina's on YouTube. <laughs> and write my response to her way of using plant medicine in healing ceremonies.
During the ceremony, she sang and recited in a trance-like fashion. She would often say, I am woman of light. I am woman of day, in her Maztec language. Her healing chants were often spoken during her ceremonies over the person while she was performing her healing rituals with psilocybin mushrooms. I felt so intimately close to Maria Sabina, meeting her through these old films. I found her chanting was a sacred invitation and an invitation into the mystical realms. Because of Maria Sabina's strength of spirit and courage and tenacity, remember those words, her strength of spirit, her courage, her tenacity, and her willingness to share her healing knowledge of the sacred mushrooms, what she called her children, we are participating in this work today. I am deeply grateful for her wisdom and spirit and seek to do my best in some humble way to follow her and continue her lineage of healing through psychedelic medicine, rituals, and ceremonies of healing. My spirit has been uplifted and healed in ways I could not begin to imagine because of Maria Sabina and her healing mushroom ceremonies. In her spirit of love and oneness for the healing transformational journey, I dedicate my book and this series that we're going to be doing for the next once a month to Maria Sabina. So let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Great story, right? Doesn't that give a foundation to what we're doing in a whole new way? It really grounds it in the essence of the beginning of how this all started. And so Marie is going to be here with us on this journey. And David and I, I, as a part of my own work on this book, and this book actually started it's incarnation 30 years ago and it was a there's a poem that we're going to be sharing and i would like to ask david to come up and read this with me now <clears throat> and katrina lily i also want to honor and thank katrina lily um we had a chance meeting in a bakery last easter as they she and her husband were on a date night and me and my husband were out on a date night and Katrina said, hey, we're going to be at the Center for Spiritual Living on Easter. Why don't you come and hear us? And I was like, yeah, that sounds great. Never knowing, <laughs> and never knowing that from that moment on, the Center for Spiritual Living would be our spiritual home and the place that we share our love and our ministry and our support of Reverend Cindy and I want to also appreciate Reverend Cindy Grimes, Inspirator, because she is so inspired to allow this to happen and realize, just like Maria Sabina, we're all stepping out in courage because this is not something that you're going to find in many other places. And so I applaud the courage and the inspiration that Cindy brings to the spiritual community and I just want us to give a really warm round of applause of thanks and gratitude to Reverend Cindy Grimes. So the spirit healer poem that I'm going to be sharing with you today uh, came as a synthesis from my uh, master's thesis that I wrote many, many years ago. And David and I are going to share it together as a meditative experience. So I, I invite you to go within in whatever way feels most comfortable to you. If you want to close your eyes, if you want to have soft eyes. If you don't want to close your eyes at all, that's fine. Um, and just pay attention to your breath and pay attention to your own spirit. The name of the poem is Spirit Healer by Galen Griggis. Just take a few cleansing breaths right now and release. And again, breathing in and release. And one more, breathing in, and release. I 
empower. I am soul unfolding. I am the lotus with petals of wisdom opening. I am the candle that illumines the mind. I am the sage and fire that cleanses. I am the drum that beats in rhythm with the heart drum. I am the resurrection. I die to the old and celebrate the emergence of the new. I honor the ancient wisdom of the ages. I am the communion of all people. I am the pain of love and the joy of sorrow. I am honest, reflecting, risking, and sharing. I am the trust that opens and heals. I am wholeness. I am being, belonging, and becoming in expression. I am the sacred space of ritual. I am aware. I am the journey to new places within. I am with intention, transcending daily waking consciousness. I am growing in time and space, grow more relative. I am the mystery. I am intuitively one with all life, all people. I am embracing the unity of all that is. I am the images, the keys to unlocking new worlds. I am spirit. I am energized and alive. I dance the dance and then let it dance me. I am breathing, touching, tasting, smelling, hearing. I am the music of the earth. I am the peace that is real and eternal. I am radical aliveness. I am peaceful death. I am being. I am non-being. I am ageless. I am order, the progressive movement of the soul upward. I am the spiral, the alpha and omega. I am Defining and redefining. I am the dream that awakens. I am the surprise. I am the fear. I am the love. I am the initiation into new life experiences. I am the rite of passage. I am the opening to new discovery. I am the voice of the heart soul. I am ritual. I am spirit healer. I am spirit healer. I am spirit healer. And so it is. Mama, mama.
Savior. Breathing that medicine in for just a moment. Are you all vibrating like I'm vibrating right now? Wow. I do want to appreciate Katrina Lilly. Let's give her a beautiful, warm round of applause. Thank you, Katrina Lilly, for sharing your medicine with us. Yes. So psychedelics, dreams, and rituals. Welcome to the community of travelers. And this today is a group that is a community of travelers. Each time we, came, we come together, it'll be a different community. So this is a once, one-time experience. This collection of these individuals, and as we collect here as a group, become a community. And so, welcome to your community today. And just say that perhaps to each other, welcome to your community. Yes, it's nice to know we have a tribe, right? <laughs> we all need a little tribe, even if we just get together with the tribe every so often. We all need a tribe, and every journey is different. And every fourth Sunday, I'm going to be doing one of the chapters out of Psychedelic Streams and Rituals, and every single one of those Sundays is going to be different. And so I'm going to give you the big picture today, so you get to know a little bit about what we're going to be doing. The fourth Sunday of every month, we're going to be talking about the triune chord and pathway of psychedelic dreams and rituals. Let me just go back for one second. The triune pathway is really interesting. The, there's a scripture in the Bible that said, a cord of three strands is not easily broken. And so what we're doing in this work together is we're combining psychedelics, dreams, and rituals together to strengthen the inner healing experience. E any one of them individually can work very effectively, right? It, it doesn't have to be medicine driven. It can be, I'm working with my dreams and rituals. That's just as powerful. In my experience, each one of those has their own medicine and can help us to heal. Putting them all together can strengthen each one of those. And we're going to learn how to do that. Now, I have a little jar here. Where did I put it? Here it is. This is the trauma jar. And this is the easiest way that I can explain perhaps how psychedelics and dreams and rituals work, particularly with the psychedelic medicine. Each of us have had experiences that kind of have traumatized us in one way or another. And as Katrina Lilly was singing about, it might not even be our trauma, it could be generational trauma. And this is trauma that we have unconsciously carried on from generation to generation to generation. And sometimes in the medicine, it shows us that. And we go, oh, that wasn't even my trauma. But innately, we carry that. And innately, we can heal that. And that's the hopefulness in this. And so the trauma jar, sometimes we're in our own jar of trauma. And what we need to do is to be able to get out of the trauma jar. Psychedelics takes us out of the trauma jar and gives us the ability to look back into the jar and see it from a much larger perspective. You can see what's in the jar. You can see the label on the jar. And so you're able to do your own internal healing work from a much broader perspective. So. The triune pathway one is the psychedelics. Now, there are some questions that we enter into that really can be helpful for us, reflecting on a bigger existential questions of our life. You know, who, 
who I was, who I am, and who do I want to be? And this is part of that self-actualization that can happen. And also, we're meeting parts of ourselves. So one of the things that I like to do is use a metaphor of the bus. All right? So there's all these different parts of us on the bus. There's the child part on the bus. There's the adult part. There's a teen part. There's a part of us that um, is maybe a mother or a father. There's part of us that goes to work. There's a part of us that um, has uh, maybe a, a mother or a father ourselves, um, or a son or a daughter. And there's a part of us that might be a rebellious part, a stubborn part, um, a playful part, a creative part. There's a part of us that might be fearful. There's a part of us that might be angry. There's a part of us that might be anxious. And beep, 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 beep. And that's the signal. <laughs> ah, that's anger. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's the signal, right, on the dashboard, <laughs> right, of the bus, all right? And so what makes the biggest difference is what part of you is driving the bus. Who's driving the bus? If fear is driving the bus, you're going to have a particular kind of ride. And so that's something that we have to pay attention to. And the good news is we can always change drivers, <laughs> right? It's our bus, <laughs> And we get to choose who's driving the bus. Now, some of that might take a little bit of negotiation, right? Because you need like a, a confident, firm, you know, grounded part of yourself to go up and tap fear on the shoulder and say, look, I'm taking the wheel now. <laughs> and so um, what we're doing is understanding the parts of ourselves, who's on the bus, and most important, what's the question? Who's driving the bus? And so just look to someone on your right or your left and just ask them, who's driving your bus? <laughs> who's driving your bus? <laughs> Who is behind that wheel? <laughs> yeah, who's driving the bus? And it's really interesting. I've done, you know, I'm a, I'm a licensed mental health counselor. I'm a credentialed addiction professional. I've done this work for 30 years, and this is the most simple way that I can help you and help others get really grounded by just asking this one simple question. Who's driving the bus right now? Right? It's not, I love internal family systems, but you have to have a whole education just to understand internal family systems, which is wonderful, but in the moment when, when anger's driving the bus, I need to understand that. <laughs> Anger's driving the bus right now, and this is not the ride I want. So there's a part of us that needs to understand all of us. Now, <laughs> this is really important. There's no bad parts that get kicked off the bus, all right? <laughs> no part of you is going to get kicked off the bus, right? We have to learn to live internally with all the parts of ourselves. Let that sink in for a minute. Not yeah. Everyone's Not everyone's going to get a driver's license. And there's parts of us that need to be in the back of the bus, <laughs> you know, maybe with a seatbelt on or something, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. So that part's not going to be driving the bus. So um, there's no bad parts of you, all right? And really, that's where shame lives. And I'm going to talk about that on one of the Sundays, guilt and shame. You know, because that guilt and shame can be driving our whole life. And ironically, that is what's driving so many people's lives. And when they come to me and we're doing psychedelic streams and rituals, what we peel back is the guilt and shame. And once you get rid of the guilt and shame, guess what? Somebody else is driving the bus and your life is different and you go in a totally different direction. They're like, wow, I didn't know it could be this way. You get it? All right. So the triumph pathway too. And again, this is the big picture, right? I'm going to share a little bit about each of the pathways and where we're going to go through this adventure together. The triumph pathway, too, is dreams. Now, dreams can be a magnificent inner transformational experience. And in that whole pathway of dreams, I'm going to talk about metaphysics and mysticism. 
And it's really important if we don't have some inkling of understanding the metaphysics, you know, the um, transpersonal realm, beyond the personal, beyond the physical, metaphysics, beyond the physical realm, what is underneath all that exists, right? These are big questions, but we have to at least begin to um, entertain those questions and understand those questions and ask those questions. And then we're going to touch on ego death and end of life distress. It's really fascinating to me how many people come to me when they're getting close to the end and they are filled with fear. And that's the existential angst. I got all this way and now I'm looking at the end and I and I feel empty, I'm afraid, I don't know what's going to come next. And the end of life distress, they gave hundreds of patients um, a dose of psilocybin. And what was the outcome? And I would highly recommend looking at the John Hopkins research that they've done on end of life distress. The outcome was they weren't afraid to make that passage. They could make that transition with peace. They knew that this was not it. This end is not the end. We are mind, we are body, and we are spirit. Our spirit has a life beyond this dimension. And so the psychedelics, the dreams help us to understand this is just one dimension that our spirit exists in. It's not the only one. And when we're able to touch into that, even just to pull a teeny tiny little thread of that, it gives us that relief, that hope, that understanding, that experience, embodied experience, that we are more than just this physical body. We're more than just this realm, that dimension that we live in today. We are spiritual beings. And what are we doing? We're having, exactly, great crowd. This is a very educated crowd. <laughs> Let's do that once more. We are spiritual beings. Exactly. That's our tribe. <laughs> We're vibing with that. We know that. So one, one of the things I want to recommend to you between now and the next time uh, that we gather together is I want you to keep a dream journal next to your bed. I want you to capture any little fragment of a dream that you can capture so that you can have that um, insight, that awareness, that touching into other dimensions. And I'll talk about dreams extensively and dreams that have, and types of dreams and how they work and how we can get the most out of those. The third pathway is through ritual. In ritual, it takes it into community, right? This is what we're doing today. We gather together in community. We meditate together. We sing together. We have that vibration together. And it's a relationship then we have with ourselves and with others. There's also really, I've worked for years, um, decades in drug and alcohol rehab. And that's a ritual in and of itself. Just recovery is a ritual. You take the rituals that are not working, <laughs> that are leading toward death and destruction, and we replace those with new rituals, rituals that bring life, rituals that bring recovery. So I'm going to talk about that place, that wonderful place. Um, and Bill W., <laughs> interestingly enough, and I write about this in the book, had an early experience with psychedelics when he was detoxing from alcohol, and he was able to have that, you know, it was belladonna. They used it for detoxing in the past. And he was able to have this beautiful white light experience in his room, and as a result of that, he understood he was connected to a power greater than himself. And from that moment on, he stopped drinking. And that's the foundation. Um, it, there was more to the story, much more. But he knew that we needed some kind of community in order to heal in, and we needed a structured steps. And so, you know, um, you know step one is understanding, you know, that sometimes in some points in our life, 
Our lives have become unmanageable, all right? That's the trauma, all right? But the good news is there is a power greater than ourselves that can restore us to sanity, to peace, to healing, right? So the key in all of this triune pathways is being connected to your source. You have to be grounded and connected to a power greater than yourself. And if you don't think there's a power greater than yourself, that could be an ailment in and of itself. There's loneliness and isolation in there. If I just have to do it all myself and make this work all by myself, that's a very tough journey. And many people feel that way. And that's why they use substances to numb out the pain of feeling so disconnected. But the substance not used therapeutically only makes him feel more disconnected. You see how that works? So here's this wonderful opportunity we have to know that there is a power greater than ourselves, that we can take this ritual, ceremonial, this journey in through the steps, through integration together. And we're gonna also look at tools for triggers and boundaries so that we can have a little more, you know, tools in our toolbox that we can draw from when we do find ourselves, you know, getting anxious or that person's driving the bus. How do I manage myself from the inside? Now, there are aspects of us on the Maslow's hierarchy. I'm only gonna touch on this super briefly for a physiological level, the safety level, love and belonging. I'll, um, in my experience, most people need this love and belonging. And I want to say to you, if you need a space and a place where you can connect with safe people, you can feel that love and belonging here at the center, which is really like a gem <laughs> in a way. And Cindy and, and others have said that. Wow. We get to be here and have a sense of belonging and touch into that. That's really important for us, just for our own needs. And so then we move up to esteem and then self-actualization. But Maslow and his wife were working on this, and a lot of times you'll see this Maslow's hierarchy end at self-actualization, all right? That is not the end. There was another level beyond that that he studied through the years, and it was self-transcendence right, that I have to my own best ability, work through some of that, and now in the transcendent mode, I give and receive from others. See, and that takes me in beyond the ego, beyond the ego. I'm not doing it, <laughs> trust me, <laughs> I'm doing what I'm doing right now because I choose to share healing life and energy with you. That's why I'm doing this. I'm not doing it to sell books, although it'd be nice if you bought a book. <laughs> All right? <laughs> the book is good. That's not my purpose, though. And I was very clear when I was writing this book, because there's a part of me that was like, okay, how can I write it so that everybody will want to buy it? And my guide said to me, mm-mm. That's not the intention, right? And I'm going to talk to you today, and we're going to write our own intention. That's not the intention behind this. It's not to be the best-selling author. It's to be the best-healing author. The best-healing book. See? And from there, everything takes care of itself. I get out of the way. You see? Because it's not from me or about me. It's about you. And it's about your healing journey. And I have had this wonderful opportunity to do it with young people as young as 19 and our elders and our wonderful crones who are they're mostly females, not as many males, interestingly enough, 82 years old. So from 19 to 82, let's take this healing journey together. Let this be your best healing experience. And at best, that's what my intention is, to be 
that presence that shows you that you can do your healing. I'm the sacred witness. And the book is just the path. And you get to choose what part of that resonates with you. So that transcends the ego. It goes beyond ourselves and others. And we sh then we create this shared space and time. Now, we can't solve the problem at the same level of consciousness that created it, right? That's Albert Einstein. So we have to shift perspectives. Now, in shifting perspective, perspectives, you know, is it uh, a rose bush or is it a thorn bush that has roses? It's a different perspective, right? You know, we never got to see the, the earth until about, what, 70 years ago maybe when they went out into space and they took pictures and for the first time. Now, what are we seeing? Galaxies upon galaxies and we realize to a certain degree that we're an infinite speck now in a universe that just goes on and on and on with galaxies upon galaxies the caterpillar does doesn't know you know as it's crawling around as a little green worm that inside of it all the time is everything that it needs to become the butterfly right? So everything you need is already inside of you. Everything you need to transform, everything you need to go through your experience, it's already in you. That's why you are your medicine. Just like even though this caterpillar may or may not realize it, inside of it is already what? Everything it needs <laughs> to become the butterfly everything <laughs> it's there it's in us now we have to take that faith journey and we have to know that all right so we begin with intention now i'm going to give you some sample intentions and everybody should have a little card and what i want you to write on here is your intention for taking this journey with us you know whether you are with us in in person or viewing this on Facebook, on, um, later on YouTube, we will take this journey together. And so we want to set an intention for this journey. What are we going to do now to do our own inner healing work? And here's some sample intentions, and you can use them, and we'll write the intention on our card. Letting go of my ego identification, letting go of control. This is huge. <laughs> this is the biggest one with many people. They, they can't have a, a really effective psychedelic experience sometime because why? They can't let go of control. And so this process of knowing our inner medicine coming out of the trauma jar, because the, the trauma is what keeps us in that control mode, you see? And so as long as I'm still in that jar and in that trauma, it's hard for me to be able to come out of it. So we progressively move through that process. Only comparing myself to myself, experiencing more of my inner healer, getting out of default mode. Um, default mode is that mode inside of us. Um, Henri Bergson talked about it as a reducing valve. Aldous Huxley picked that phrase up and so did many others. That means that reducing valve only lets in that teeny tiny stream of awareness that we need for survival. But when we use psychedelics or when we go to sleep and we enter into that dream realm, the reducing valve opens up and we're able to experience more of our own inner world in a much more uh, uh, first-hand way, very intimate way. So sometimes we need to get out of that default mode. Do I want the problem or do I want the solution? Knowing at this moment, I already have what I need. There's, there's the butterfly, right? <laughs> the caterpillar already has what it needs. Um, if I ask, I will receive it. Helping me see only love and unmask my fear. Loving and accepting my body. Knowing what it means to be awake and one with the divine. So I want you to take a few moments now and write your intention and it can be an intention that can kind of help you or support you even as you're taking this inner healing journey um, through the book. 
you know, what's your intention as you're doing this healing work? So take a few minutes now and uh, write your intention. What would I like this journey in my new life to be? And this is a new year. This is a new life experience for you. I'll go back and put the other ones up just for a minute so you can look at those. So just take a moment and write those intentions down. Yes, you can do more than one. Good question. Yes, that means that reducing valve, that place where we just are almost like the bare minimum just to function, we are willing to release that and step back. So default mode is like the, um, the orchestra leader, right? So the maestro is leading, telling each instrument when it needs to come in, how it needs to be played, um, you know, when they need to be quiet. And so... The, the reducing valve is like that, um, the maestro. And so we need the maestro to leave <laughs> and allow whatever wants to emerge from the orchestra to be played in a much more organic fashion and just to experience the flow. And so it's interesting in the psychedelic journeys because it almost intentionally takes us out of that default mode. And dreams do the same thing. You know, when you go to sleep and you can fly or you talk to ancestors that have passed on or you're out of default mode, right? That little centurion that stands by the gate keeps all of that unconscious material from bubbling up. Because if we were in that all day long, it might be a little bit much to, to so it keeps all of that submerged in the unconscious realm and the default mode opening up can help what needs to come up bubble up. Does that make sense? Is that helpful to see it that way? Or understand it a couple of different ways. All right. Now, to do this work, you have to be grounded, right? Because this is what happens when we dysregulate, right? If we're not ready to do the work, then it becomes too much, too intense, so we can dysregulate. So we need some grounding techniques. Knowing and regularly doing techniques such as mindfulness practice, um, any kind of personal ritual, ceremony, meditation, quiet time, be in nature, um, walk barefoot on the earth. Those are powerful ways that we can ground ourselves. And it's really important that we're doing them every single day. You know, one of the most simplest, basic things that we can do, get sunshine in your eyes every day. I mean, we're fortunate to live in a place where it's almost 365 days a year, we get to have sunshine, you know? Um, so go outside, take your shoes off, you know, walk on the earth, and let the sunshine come into your eyes. That's a, gr a simple, basic grounding technique that you can use. Sometimes after a session, too, when I'm doing medicine sessions with people, that's of great value, just to be able to go outside and reground again. <laughs> All right, so here's some sample phrases for grounding. And I want you to use a phrase that can be your phrase. You know, if you feel yourself like getting a little bit anxious or dysregulating a little bit or feeling a little overwhelmed, um, go with the flow. Trust and let go. I'm willing to see what I need to see. Oh. <laughs> what 
wants to be revealed. So go ahead and write down one of those grounding statements on your card. Right? So write down one of those grounding statements. So, sure, I lean into what wants to be revealed. I think it's on now. This is what I signed up for. <laughs> That's a really good one, actually. <laughs> oh, gosh. This is what I signed up for. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am not alone. I am safe. I am protected. What can I, what can I learn? These are wonderful centering grounding phrases. Oh, and there was one more. Breathe and take the next step. I like that one. <sighs> Breathe and take the next step. Now the last part of this, and I'm laying the foundation for you for all the work that we're gonna do all during the year. The last part of this is an invitation to your inner healer. So Katrina Lilly sang about it. Our poem meditation was about that. So there are many names for that healing part, including the divine self, Buddha nature, the loving presence, higher power, God and goddess, creative intelligence, divine matrix, the universe, Christ within, the Tao. It's known by many names, but the same healing presence of inner beingness that is a part of you. So you have this intimate relationship, right? So in this intimate relationship, you get to choose how you relate, what you call one another in this. You know how you have like little love names that you, you know, use for your, your significant other perhaps, you know? What's your love name for the divine that is a part of you? You know, that's the intimacy of this connection, right? So I want you on the other side of the card, just very briefly, even just a few lines, you, I want you to write an invitation to the inner healing presence inside of you. Dear inner healing presence, dear universe, dear God, goddess, dear indwelling spirit, whatever that is in the intimacy of your own being, just connect with that for a few minutes and write a couple of lines because sometimes we don't realize how disconnected we are. And so this is just saying, it's like a friend who you know they're there, but you don't talk to them or you don't call them or you don't text them, you know? So this is like our connection to that inner healing presence and saying, Hey, hi, I'm here. I want to connect. I want to have this relationship a little deeper with you. I want to talk more often. Let's show up for each other, you know. I'm here. I invite you to be a part of my journey. So write that little invitation. And I realize this is just kind of the little step into it and a little bit of an invitation. On each of these. And what I would like for us to do, if you want, the sharing is all just what you feel comfortable. I would like you at your tables, and that's kind of why we're set up at the tables. If you choose to, I would like you to share any one of these. You could share your intention. 
your centering and grounding affirmation, and if you choose to, your inner healer invitation. It's your opportunity to hear yourself. Remember, everybody is not like going to judge you for what you are doing in your inner journey. In fact, we're here to do just the opposite. We're here to hold sacred space for one another so we have a safe place to hear ourselves and affirm ourselves and know what's, what's happening in us. And just being able to articulate it even a little bit is very powerful because we hear ourselves saying it and it's witnessed at the table. Nobody needs to comment about anybody else's intention. What we're going to do is just take the next few minutes and I'm gonna give you 10 minutes if that's okay and you're gonna share your, any one of these if you choose to. So I would suggest sharing in groups of two or three, no more than that, so that everybody gets a chance to be heard. All right, so if we could do that now for the next 10 minutes, just the sharing of our intention, centering and grounding affirmation and your inner healer in groups of two or three.
maybe about two more minutes. Just make sure everybody's had a chance to share. Two minutes. Okay, all right. Let's bring that time of sharing to a close. Was that helpful? Yeah. Was that nice to be able to say it out loud and just hear one another and be a witness to one another? All right. Today is the inauguration of something else very special. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are going to have our very first ever psychedelic integration circle. This is free to the community. This is free to the community. And it's a peer-led circle of like-minded people curious about psychedelics. And also it's a safe place to share and talk about your own experience. It isn't therapy, just to be clear. <laughs> this is not a therapeutic group. This is a sharing, a peer-to-peer -peer sharing a circle. And it's also education and information on harm reduction because sometimes people do not have a safe place where they can come to or safe people that they can share their experiences with. And that can do a harm to them and perhaps, you know, create a whole residual effect that we don't even realize sometimes. So harm reduction is a part of this as well. So psychedelic integration circle today, 1 to 2 p.m. Um, David, you want to stand? David and Haley are going to be facilitating it. Haley, you want to just uh, say something really quick to invite folks? Yeah, so we'll be talking a little bit more about the, some of the things that Galen has gone over, um, like intentions and things like that. Um, and uh, it'll be a little bit more focused on psychedelic experiences. So if you've had previous experiences, we can unpack those things and talk with each other and just get support from the community. Thank you. Let's give David and Haley a round of applause. <laughs> Both of them are in training um, through Polaris in San Francisco for ketamine assisted psychotherapy. Uh, training and they're just completing their program now. So it's a wonderful gift that they're giving to us as well. Um, now, every fourth Sunday is going to be on this topic. So every fourth Sunday, I'll be talking about something different. In February, it's on spiritual wisdom, beyond shame, guilt, and fear. Don't miss it. It's amazing. All right, um, March, your golden shadow. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> we're going to go there. <laughs> Loving all the parts of yourself, all right? Um, in April, self-compassion and self-forgiveness. Um, integration is the key. A lot of this is because we're not loving ourselves and being compassionate toward ourselves. We're not forgiving ourselves. And so we need to move into that. May is on regeneration. And trust me, I love this whole idea that we internally are regenerating ourselves all the time. Mind, body, and spirit, rebirthing yourself. So that just gives you a little a bit of, a, a, you know, what's coming up. I would love to see this room completely filled. And so please invite others. In fact, yesterday, I was at the uh, Sunshine State uh, Book Festival, and I did a book signing there all day long, and Sharon and I met for the very first time, and Sharon is here from Gainesville because we met yesterday from the Sunshine uh, State Book Festival. So this is, uh, and all it took was like, Sharon, why don't you come and join us? And she brought a friend. <laughs> so, you know, this is the way our, our community um, can expand and we can be of help and love and caring and support and healing to one another. Now, the Center Bookstore has the book. Every book you buy from the Center, guess what? The Center gets the profits. A portion of the profits go to help support the Center. So it's nice that we can get it from Amazon, but it's really nice when we give it to the Center because they benefit 
Um, so uh, a portion of all the book sales goes to the center. I want to thank you. Was this what you hoped for? Was this what you expected? Yes? Yes? All right. Yes. Yes. The last slide. So um, I do have professional services available, traditional counseling services, individual ketamine-assisted psychotherapy, monthly group uh, ketamine-assisted psychotherapy, workshops and retreat. We're doing equine therapy along with ketamine-assisted psychotherapy. Exactly. It's going to be on a 10-acre farm with lots of horses in a beautiful setting, earth wisdom, connecting with the earth, and breath work with ketamine, which is going to be, we're going to have that um, offered here very soon. So the breath work um, with ketamine and, um, of course, I do training for those who might be interested because some people are asking to come out and do some training with others as well. I want to thank you so much for your loving attention today. Katrina Lilly is going to share another song with us. Cindy's going to do our announcement. Uh, you want to? And then at 1 o'clock, we're going to meet in the bookstore area. Um, and uh, just to get an idea, how many people are going to stay for the integration circle? Raise your hands so we get a count. Get a count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. About, about 12, 12, 14. 12 or 14 will meet. So it would be a nice area. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. What a joy to be here and launch this with you all today. Much appreciation. Thank you. What a great kickoff. Yay. You know, you, you thanked me for being courageous, I guess. And I don't feel like it's courageous to do this. I feel like it's right. I feel like it's what's necessary. There is so much hurt and pain and trauma in our world. And I have experienced some of these things and I know the change that it can make. I know the change that we can make as community. I know the change and the impact that it can have on us individually. And so it doesn't feel brave at all. It just feels like what we need to do, natural and normal. And so invite your other friends who are into this kind of thing. And if they're not, that's okay too. There's lots of other places they can go for their spiritual food. So this is who we are. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this is an opportunity for us to celebrate our abundance. We are a freestanding center for spiritual living. We are um, affiliated with a larger organization, but we here, uh, this is our place, and um, it is here because of the giving of the people in our community. So we offer lots of ways for people to give. There's basket going around right now if you want to put some money in the basket or you can go out into the hallway later and, uh, and do it online. Or you can also do something called text to tithe. I think maybe that's the next slide. I don't know. Is it? There we go. Text to tithe. So once you have that number programmed into your phone, it's real easy to just put the amount of money that you want to give us, you know, whatever that is, 20, 200, 2,000, whatever you're feeling. Millions. Generous. Millions. Hey, two million. We're open to all of it, and we know what we're going to do with it, too. We know what we, we want to do to expand this place and to shore it up and so all kinds of stuff. Kids next. Kids next. They're coming. So I'm going to invite you to say this affirmation along with me, uh, and just think about it as whatever it is that you want to give to the, to the center, or just make sure that you're giving in general, you know, that we give what we want to receive. So if, if it's money that you want, Plant money seeds, right, by giving money. If it's friendship, give friendship. We give what we want to receive. So here we go. It is the nature of life to give of itself. As it is the tree's nature to bear fruit and the flower's nature to bloom, it is my nature to share the gifts of my time, talent, and treasure. I participate in the divine flow of life, giving generously and receiving abundantly. I am blessed and I am a blessing. I am grateful. Do y'all feel that? That you are blessed? And if you're blessed, you're a blessing to the rest of us. Live in that. Be that. Okay, let's see what's next. We got ways to give. 
Sign up for our newsletter, especially those of you who are here for the first time. Go to cslocala.org. We send it out just about once a month, and then when there's special things, you might get something on Friday night or whatever, just reminding you. Um, announcements. So as Galen said, there's different things that happen here every week. First week of the month is spiritual practices, although next week we're going to be doing um, our annual meeting. That's what's happening February 4th is our annual meeting, essentially a state of the union. What we're about, where we've been, kind of where we are now and where we see ourselves headed. Lots of great changes for 2024. We're so excited. Y'all don't even know how amazing it is, some of you. Some of you do know, but most of you don't, that this place was on the edge of just closing our doors as the pandemic you know, did some damage to us and lots of folks. And look at where we are today now. Just look around you. This, this is spirit at work right here. So annual meeting, we've got uh, Bob Saima and Shannon. I can't think of her last name, but they are a couple. They're phenomenal. They're going to be here also, I think, the second uh, Sunday in February, which is our super second Sunday. Then uh, what else do we have? Oh, Karen Drucker. How many of you know, anybody know Karen Drucker in here? Oh my gosh, she is an incredible New Thought musician. She's going to be in the area, I think, for a, a woman's uh, retreat. If you're interested in that, let me know. I'll connect you in Orlando. But she's going to be playing here in March. So we've got lots of great stuff. And then volunteer opportunities. Come next week and find out all about that. We have lots going on. Oh, I was supposed to be clicking through all these things. Oops. All right, let's just click. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Thank you. Someone was just way more organized than me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, let's bring our children. They've been in and out. Come on, bring the kids on. Yes, bring the kids on in. We want to offer them a blessing. Hello. Wow. They've been behaving. I mean, you didn't almost know they were here for a long time today, so they've been really good. Come on, little folks. Okay, yes, yes, and all of you, actually, if you don't have children or you tap into that inner child, just put your hand on your chest here and just say, or you can rub your hands together and send some nice energy to our young people, right? And here's what we say. It's up here. We honor you. We see your light. May it shine on all that you do. And so it is. And so it is. You all want to stay up here and dance while Katrina sings? You can. No? Okay, one said no, one said yes. <laughs> but I think it's time for us to close, right? Anything else want to be said here? That's right. Send that good juju out to everybody. <laughs> of medicine. Okay. Check, check, check. All right, we're on. Okay. So I'm going to sing one more song with you all. And this one I saved for last because after such a beautiful teaching about how we're our own medicine, I wanted to invite one more tool into your lives, which is the medicine of music, right? Who can feel and resonate with the medicine of music, right? Who prefers to listen to the medicine of music? Who prefers to make the medicine of music and sing it and make it, yeah, and both, right? 
So I am a huge believer and practicer and creator of music medicine. It's my spiritual path that incorporates other spiritual paths, but music is my main guiding force at this time in my life. And really love to share that um, with all of you, whether it's your primary path or just one that you come into contact with, hopefully every day, I hope, a little bit. Um, so I'm going to share this song. One of my favorite songs is called Home is Where the Heart Is. And I really, there's three parts to this song. And I really want to invite you, if you feel it, to sing along. Who feels brave enough to sing along with me? Raise your hand. Who, who, just the, raise your hand if just the, the thought of that is terrifying. I want to know. Anyone? I liked how some of the hands were, I went up for both. Like, I'm going to do it and it's terrifying. I like that. I like that. So there's three sections to this song, and the first one is just saying, home is where the heart is, home is where the heart is, home is where the heart is. And then the next section is saying, Shanti Om, Shanti Om, which is a prayer of peace, an invocation of peace, the Sanskrit Shanti word for peace. And then the third section is um, the Ho'oponopono prayer, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, uh, just connecting and... Um, showing honor and reciprocity for the Hawaiian people who that phrase was originally and very loosely translated from. Okay, so three sections, and I'm going to start with the first one, and I just really invite you all to sing along or to echo or to move your bodies or to participate in whatever way you feel called. Can you sing with me too? Yeah? Okay. I know that hope... Whoa, we're doing something. Hold on. I'm here in sound. I'm here in sound. If I have to unplug, I will. I know that hope. Oh, oh, wait, hold on. Can you turn? Can you turn it off? Everything off for just a second. Oh, it is the drum. Great. I thought it was my ukulele. Right? Okay. All right. All right. We'll try this third. Third time's a charm. I know that hope is where the heart is. I know that home needs your help is where the heart is. More. I know that home where my heart is is where my heart is. And one more time. I know that home is where my heart is. Wait for it. Where the start is. It's where my humble heart is. Shanti Om. Om. Shanti Om. Shanti Om. Keep going with that. Keep it going strong. Keep the melody strong. You know I love you, and I'm sorry, please forgive me, please forgive me, and I thank you. Are we going to say that again? I want you to really say it to yourself. You know I love you. I know that home 
is where the heart is. Let's go for it. I know that home is where the heart is. All right, stay committed even if I do something good. I know that home is where the heart is. Again. I know that home in your heart when you sing these words. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. I just want to appreciate all of you for being here. I want to invite us all just for a moment to put our hands on our heart. Just send all that medicine that we've received, reciprocate it back into your being, fill your own cup before you go out and do the amazing work in the world. Hold some of this medicine for yourself for a moment first, really feeling your cup fill. So grateful to be here, and I just want to invite each and every one of you um, as my ministry, as my offering, um, to connect with your music, the music that's within you as um, just another one of these amazing tools. and. Um, to add to all of this, that can be a part of all of this, that can be a part of psychedelic experiences. Music is such an important part of all of these journeys and ceremonies and rituals and, um, and dream state as well. Music is such um, an important part. And if anybody on your individual journey or a friend is looking to deepen their music practice, their music medicine practice, I teach a really amazing um, online program with my husband called Free the Music. I have a couple people in this room that have been a part of that. And um, if you have any interest in uh, learning to connect more with your voice or your music or your medicine within, feel free to reach out to me or I encourage you to just dive deeper in that path as you incorporate all these other medicines into your life that are you know, within you. And music especially is one that I am so passionate about and the voice because it's within you. The first thing that we ever did on this earth was, yes, inhale, but then the exhale was a song. The exhale was a cry. So just as it all goes back to the breath, it all goes back to the song. So I just want to inspire and leave you all with that because that's helped me so much on my path to be able to sing through it, to sing through it all. Thanks so much for having me. So grateful to be here. Thank you, Kat.
What a great day. So I'm just going to invite you all to say this prayer, this closing prayer with me uh, that comes from our sister organization at Unity. And if the word God doesn't work for you, just insert whatever works for you better. So it's very simple. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And so it is. Have an awesome week, everybody. Hope to see you next week. All right. Yay.